Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are some tips for getting the most from desktop widgets on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So a new feature in macOS Sonoma is the ability to put widgets right on your desktop. And there's a lot you can do with that simple feature. So first let's take a look at the basics. To add widgets to your desktop the easiest way is to control click, right click, or two finger click on the desktop and select Edit Widgets. Now you get the Widgets panel down here and you can scroll through all the different categories, find a widget you want to add, and simply drag it to the desktop and put it wherever you want on the desktop. Notice that it will snap in position if you're near the top or sides. And if you're in the middle you can just stick it wherever you want and you can add it right there. Now once you've added it you don't need to bring up the editor again to do a lot of things with it. For instance you can control click, right click, or two finger click on the widget and this brings up a context menu. From here you can remove the widget or if it's a more complex widget you can do other options and we'll look at those. So let's add another widget here. I'm going to add the weather widget and then I'll click Done. And if I were to control click on this you see that I can remove this widget but I can also change its size like that. And I could also edit the widget. And in this case with the weather you can change the location for that forecast. So I just click here where it says My Location and now I can choose another location for that weather. And there will be different options depending upon what the widget does. Now most widgets are interactive in some way. The simplest way they can be interactive is you click on them and it takes you to the app that the widget belongs to. So in this case it will open up the Weather app and take me right to that location. A lot of widgets will do this simply going to the appropriate place in the app. But other widgets let you do other things directly in the widget. So let's go to Edit Widgets right here and I'm going to go to Reminders. And I'm going to add a Reminders List widget here. Now another way to edit it is while you're in the editing mode you can click on it and it will go to edit without having to control click on it. And I can change the list here. So let's go and take a look at say this groceries list and done. And now you see it lists groceries there. With this kind of widget you can interact directly with the widget. So if I click on the circle next to an item it completes the item. Other widgets will simply let you click them to go to the app but to a certain location. So for instance I can add a news widget here. And if I click on a specific story in the widget it will take me right to that story. Now before I showed you that when you drag widgets they will snap to the edges to put them in a nice neat grid like this. You can actually move widgets on the desktop without going into editing mode. So I can grab and drag this widget here and as long as I place it in the middle of nowhere I can position it into any pixel position I want. But as soon as I get near another widget it snaps to a grid. And you see you have lots of different options here like this. And you can snap to the top right corner as well, to the bottom, underneath the dock there. So you have lots of different options for how to arrange things. Now when you also have icons on your desktop, whether they're for drives or for files, you can't place the icons on top of a widget or vice versa. So if I were to drag this icon over here and try to drop it onto the widget it will simply not allow that. I can place it next to the widget but as soon as I try to do it a little bit on top of it it will just go back to its last location. Likewise if I were to move a widget to where some icons were it pushes them aside but it's not permanently relocating them. Because notice if I drag this widget away those snap back to their actual locations. Of course if you have View and then Sort By set to something then your icons are going to position themselves and then moving a widget will simply push them out of the way so they flow around it. Now if you bring up another app you may notice that the widgets remain there on the desktop behind the app but they kind of fade into a monochrome mode. You've got control over this. So go into System Settings and then in Desktop and Dock look for the section on Widgets. You can set the widget style to automatic meaning that when the desktop is in the foreground, and I'll press F11 to do that, they're full color. And then if there's another window in the way 
then they're going to be monochrome. But you can also say that you want them to be full color all the time or monochrome all the time. Also notice the setting here for show widgets on the desktop. So you can actually turn it off and you won't see them on the desktop. So it's a way to maybe have them available but switch them on or off when you need it. But you also have the setting here for in stage manager. So with this on if I switch to stage manager you'll see I see the widgets even when I'm using an app in stage manager. But if I turn it off they're not there unless I click on the desktop to just have the desktop visible in stage manager. As soon as I switch back to an app you see they're gone. If we look at the calendar widget you can put an up next widget there which is useful. You can also just put the date which is kind of neat to have here at the upper right hand corner or perhaps even a monthly calendar like that if you need it. But a particular use is this list here. If you put that there it's going to show you your upcoming events even if all those events are today or maybe they're spread out over the next couple of weeks. But when you control click it to edit it you'll see that there are options here to either mirror the calendar app which will just show you what you would see in a list there with the calendars that you have on switched on and the ones off switched off. But if you turn that off you can actually select the specific calendars for that list. So you can customize this so it only shows you say work events. Clocks have actually two main types of clock. The main clocks here, clock 1, clock 2, and clock 3 show the current time according to your settings. But underneath that are City 1, City 2, and City 3. The thing you can do with those is you can specify a location. So you may not really need to have an additional indicator of what time it is right here. But if you wanted to show some other place you can have a clock for that. And If you want to show several of those you can get these two different groups of four here and customize which clocks are shown for those four clock faces. Now an interesting feature that isn't immediately obvious is you can use several widgets from the same app. So for instance I can drag two of these city clocks here and I'll leave this one here at Cupertino but I'll change this one here to be another city like that. I could have a whole row of these if I want. You could do the same for a lot of other apps like for instance the weather app. You could have the forecast for one city and the forecast for another city. Or the stocks app. You can use the symbol one here and have it for a single stock and then for a second widget you could set it to something else. And then you can have a whole string of those as well. One that seems really simple but actually is one of the most interesting I think is the contacts one. So you could take a contacts widget. Let's take one that has two items in here. And we could set the two of them here to be a specific contact. So I'll set these two here like that. And now you'll see those contacts there. But when you click on one you actually get the option to do something like start a new email message or message them or call them. The batteries widget allows you to set a battery indicator for different devices that you've connected to your Mac. Now in this case all I have here in this demo account is set up this one MacBook Air. So it shows this battery percentage for my MacBook Air. But if I had AirPods connected to it and an iPhone with the same Apple ID I should be able to put battery indicators for those two things here as well. Now if you look through the apps that you've got here for widgets you'll notice that some of them offer apps that aren't even on your Mac. So for instance right here this is from my iPhone and you can actually see it right here at the top right it says from iPhone. Matter of fact if you go to all widgets and you browse through you'll sometimes see an app that says on Mac or from iPhone and you could switch between them to get different widgets from those devices. So when you choose a widget that's just from your iPhone then you'll actually get a widget that's generated by your iPhone and sent using continuity over to your Mac. So you're not just limited to what apps you have installed on your Mac. You can use the ones in your iPhone as well to display widgets. Now one of the most powerful widgets is the Shortcuts widget. The way to use that is first in your Shortcuts app create a folder and populate that with a few widgets. I'm just going to use two here because I want to create a two button widget. So I've got these and then I can go and add the widget for a Shortcuts set of buttons right here. I'll use this one here 
and I'll control click it and then edit it and then set the folder to be the folder that I created. So there are those two widgets. So now I can run these shortcuts right here from clicking on the desktop. So that runs the calculator app and this one generates the sunset time. Some apps have extra large widgets. So if you look here on the size option, say for shortcuts, you've got extra large which is way bigger than what's available on the iPhone. So made for the max screen. When you look through widgets it's hard to tell which are the big ones but usually you get this large square one here and then you get one that's kind of double the width but has to shrink down to fit into that space. And that's the extra large one. So look for widgets that have that size. The Photos app is also really interesting in that you can not only pick a featured photo here but you can also specifically select a photo by choosing the album. So when you choose the album like this and then you edit it you can choose exactly which album you want it to show. Now you can only show one picture at a time. So there's one photo there. But if you want control and you really want to show a single photo then create a photo album. And I've created one here called Desktop Widget and I've only put one photo in it. So now if I were to choose that particular photo then I'm going to get just that one photo all the time. So it's a great way to put a photo of a family member right on your desktop like you might actually have on your real desk and have that there. And of course you can include several of those. You can do a small version of this and then have several pictures across the top or along the side whatever. But you could also use this to show information. So notice here in the Photos app I've created another album called Desktop Note. And in there I've made up a graphic with some information. Now I just did some keyboard shortcuts but it could be anything. It could be something pertaining to work, some uh, phone numbers you need to have, uh, some information that is important to you. Instead of putting a post a note on the side of your screen with it, make a graphic of it using a graphics app or even doing it in preview or something. And then stick that there. The size of this particular widget here is square. So just make it square and make sure the text is large enough where you'll be able to read it at this size. And then if you change to that album like that then you'll get that on your desktop instead. So a little reference sheet there. Now here's an interesting technique that I think a lot of people will adopt. If you want to change which widgets are available but you hate deleting one because then you have to select all the options again if you add it. Use Notification Center as a holding place. So it's very easy to drag a widget from Notification Center onto the desktop and vice versa. So you can simply move things there and then you have the widget you want there and if you want to change it again you can drag something in and drag something back out. So for instance you could have a whole list of news widgets here for different topics and simply drag the ones that you want to pay attention to on that particular day onto your desktop and leave the rest in Notification Center. Here's my last tip. You can use your desktop as a whole dashboard. You can either have it on your regular desktop or maybe if you have a desktop hooked up to a TV, maybe an older Mac Mini that could still run Sonoma, you could set up all the widgets like this and have it display all sorts of information all the time. Matter of fact, doesn't this kind of look like the little graphic displays that Apple shows during its presentations? Everything in a little rounded rectangle. So this is an interesting way to use a Mac here. Imagine having a Mac Mini that's in a conference room somewhere and just showing stuff like this while nobody's using it to present. Or if there's a Mac Mini in your living room that you use to watch a video or use the Apple TV app, you could have the desktop like this. So when you're not using it, it's useful. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.